another video. I'm going to say this is part two, but it's about class. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to warn, I'm going to start this off with a disclaimer. The disclaimer is, I am not considering myself class C, per se. Okay, that's a standard I don't like to put on myself. I never like to put myself in the upper echelon of what we are. Um, I never like to put myself in the upper echelon of what can be. I don't like to call myself the elite. So may, maybe some may think I'm classy, maybe some may think I'm not. That's okay, I don't care. Ultimately, I just want to talk about class. I've studied it pretty extensively. Um, etiquette, those type of things, uh, they're, some of it uh, is outdated. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this from a different angle here. What is class? Okay. To me, it, it's, it's kind of subjective. I mean, some people may think they're classy. A lot of people think they're classy. Like, oh, that's a really classy person. Or someone with a low standard may call you classy. And I mean you as in not all viewers, but the person that you really know you're not, and yet you're, you accept it. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. I'm classy. Okay, classy but sassy. No. Okay, so. Sassy is not classy. Period. Okay, um, class is when you not think you're better than someone else. So you don't think you're better than other people. Class is when you actually respect yourself enough that, and it's all about respect for yourself, self-respect, okay, that you won't subject yourself to any external pressure. I think that's, that's, that's uh, my my ad lib version of what class is, at least to me. You're going to maybe have a different definition. I'm not defining class here. I'm telling you what I think it is, so we're on the same page so you can see how I'm communicating this. It's a level of respect where you are not going to lower your standard bar ever for whatever circumstance. Your standards are not going to go down. You have a standard, and that standard is set. The biggest sacrifice of class I've seen in today's society is relationships, okay? It starts with people being so afraid to be alone that they, they're so afraid of being alone that they lower their standards to put up with somebody they know they shouldn't put up with, okay? They know they shouldn't, but they do it anyway because they're afraid of being alone, okay? That, that's the biggest sacrifice of class. And many times I have been that guy that they shouldn't put up with, but they do, okay? I always tell them, like, what the hell are you doing still here? I can't tolerate you dealing with me. You need to get enough respect where you don't deal with me. That's self-respect. And I'm honest with them, like, what the hell are you still doing? Why are you still here? It's, an, it's, it's sad to see people willing to go through the levels of abuse. Not that I'm abusive, but the levels of abuse they go through because they're afraid of being alone. They'd rather get beat mentally, physically, sexually, whatever way they want to get beat. And not in a pleasurable way. <laughs> they rather would get beat, abused, than be alone. And I really think this roots in self-understanding why people are afraid of being alone. I'm extremely extroverted. I love being around people. But I spend a lot of time alone. Because I'm comfortable with myself. <laughs> I love who I am. And I like who I am. I wouldn't change a damn thing. I mean, I'm, obviously, I'm trying to change the direction I'm moving my life and the, uh, the some qualities that need to be enhanced. But honestly, I wouldn't change my temperament at all. Some character things I'm working through. But my viewpoints... Maybe wrong, but I like the way that I process information. I love who I am at the core. I believe this is the reason why we're afraid of being alone. I believe this is the reason why as a society we're afraid of being alone. Also, I think it's programming from society. We are taught at a very early age that we need to be married and have kids. It's like the epitome of life. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. But... I believe that if you don't get that, you're going to feel like you're missing something. Every movie, every TV show, every something, there's always a love story. It is 
so pounded into our head by the media, by every book. I'm saying every. That's a blanket statement. Not every book. Majority of fiction novels have some type of love story to them. Maybe minor. Maybe some kind of love interest. Maybe some kind of attraction. Something. It has always been the theme throughout history. But there's a reason for it. Okay? There's a reason for this. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying there's a reason for it. Love is the channel to freedom. Love is what brings freedom to people's lives. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is this. Love bringing freedom to people's lives in the sense of you move away from narcissism. You find happiness with love, which is true. Okay? But you have to be capable of loving. You know what that means? It means you can't be narcissistic. sense does it it means that you can't be narcissistic you can't be a narcissist and be in love in my honest opinion yeah you can have i guess minor levels it's like i said on another video like a polarity narcissism one end love on the other the more love grows the more narcissist shrinks narcissism shrinks and then narcissism grows the more that love shrinks you choose to what to develop your love in you choose we are not born by nature. Okay, let me rewind before I go into this spiel. I'm a Christian. I believe we're born in death. And we're free in Christ. I want to blanket statement this, okay? No, I'm not going to preach you religious principles here. I just personally believe that. So, I believe that God is love. So whether you want to call God love, I don't care. I'm going to use the word love because I like to stay general here. I want it to apply to all people with this message. Okay, so if you're not religious, that's okay. This still applies. I'm not trying to convince you of my views. But with that frame of reference, let's just say that God is love. Let's say that love is the epitome of life. Love is life, God, everlasting life, whatever. You've got this end point. You start in death, complete and utter narcissism. Sigmund Freud, I believe, not off the top of my head, um, off the top of my head, rather, uh, called it the id, basic desires, I believe. Basic instinctual desires, pure narcissism, survival mode, this is what I'm going to do. Correct me if I'm wrong. I will put a little tab on the video if I'm wrong here, but I think it's called the id. Okay. Not a psychology expert. I just like dabbling into it once in a while. But you start in this level of narcissism. It doesn't destroy the point, by the way. You start at this level of narcissism. Zero. Point zero. You make a choice. You can hang out here. Or you can grow. You can move toward love. Okay? And as you move toward love, you can love yourself. Doesn't mean you have to have somebody else. Just move toward love. How do you do that? By choice. What do I, I deserve? People ask me, how do you love yourself so much? Not in a negative way, like, wow, you're really arrogant. No, more of the way, like, how are you so comfortable being alone? How, how, do, you, how do you deal with that? My answer is this. I have always strived to never, ever bend my standards. I deserve better. It's always what's going through my head. And I say the word deserve, I really mean I'm going to earn better, not deserve, because I don't believe in entitlements. I'm going to change the words here. I'm going to earn better. Okay? I have such a determination to earn the most respect I can in my life by giving respect first. Okay? Give respect, then you can expect to receive respect. Okay, so I have tried and struggled to respect myself my entire life, and I, I tell you, my first 24 years, hanging out in this zone, all narcissism, I wasn't any better than a modern day teenager, but what I did have, that they don't have, is drive, work ethic. I saw what I wanted to be, 
and who I wanted to be and how I wanted to talk to people. And I said, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to move along the scale to achieve respect and to give respect, but self-respect. So the standard bar is what taught me indirectly to love myself because I know in my heart I can earn better. So the key is not deserve better, but earn better. And how do you do it? You develop yourself. You spend time in yourself. You spend time on yourself. Okay, you, you look at your pitfalls and your weaknesses and areas you do and review things you've said and done. Don't blame yourself. Shit happens. You make mistakes. Hold yourself responsible and be like, I'm not doing that again. But do not think for one second that you are a piece of crap. There's some global exceptions to that. You're a piece of crap if you consistently treat people like shit and you don't give a shit about not treating them like shit. That makes you a piece of crap. You can change it. You're not a permanent piece of crap. So you can actually have a metamorphosis and turn from a brown piece of turd to actually a human being. But until then, you're a piece of shit. Okay. But to give respect is the key to having self-respect. How do you give respect? Stop thinking about yourself. This is where, this is where class, this all ties into my point with what is class. So what happened to this? That's the question I want to know. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback because honestly, I don't know what happened. I'm speculating. Most of my videos are speculation to stimulate conversation to get people to think about these things. I don't ever position myself as an expert. And if I have, I apologize. It's not my objective here. I'm not here to teach you. I'm here to get you to think. I want to know your guys' feedback. It's important to me. It's important to communicate with the world. We have all this modern technology. I can spend all day taking selfies, or I can try to reach out to people who are brilliant, way smarter than me. And we can bond together, and I can use my strengths, and they can use their strengths, and we can actually institute change. Why don't we form an organization that does this? That's the kind of way my mind thinks. Like, how do we position ourselves in the marketplace to A, be perceived by the marketplace as a good cause. B, influence the marketplace to change. Okay? And I mean marketplace, not necessarily, I mean marketplace for people's ideals. So, class, kindness to yourself first. If you're kind to yourself, you can be kind to others. I beat myself up for years about all the stupid crap I've done. I've done a lot of stupid crap. I've said a lot of stupid things. I've done stupid things. But the important part about it is, now I don't hold myself responsible for those anymore. A lot of those weren't even my fault. And the other half of it is, I've accepted it. It made me who I am. And with hindsight, every event that I've ever went through was positive. I've never went through a negative event because it made me who I am. And that is positive because I don't want to change. Me. But a lot of the events I avoided was by choice. And it's the events that I avoided that were the most important to my development, not the ones that I went through. So what do I avoid? By choice, self-respect. Do I want to surround myself with those people? Is that judgmental? Probably. But it's protective. Obviously, you're not going to ju jump in a pit of rats unless you're just crazy. Or you're not going to jump into a den of lions. You may love lions, but that would be kind of stupid. Right? I'm not going to jump into a crack house. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to become a crackhead. I don't want to be consumed by the crackism. <laughs> I don't want to be that way. So my desires are not there. My desires are rather to be me. And I've got to surround myself with people who are smarter than me, people who are more ambitious than me, people who are more brilliant than me. I love being the dumbest person in the room. And on this web, YouTube, I'm one of the dumbest. <laughs> and I like it. I like the, the brilliant minds on here that I, I've seen and heard. And it's, it's always, I'm very appreciative of people who subscribe to this channel because I've never, never, never intended this channel to ever grow. I just posted these videos because I journaled all the time. I wrote my thoughts on paper. 
And I decided I just wanted to open up and say, hey, I'm going to just put it out there. See what kind of like minds are out. Because when you journal, I've no, no, there's no opportunity to reach out to anybody. But there's a lot of people out there with brilliant ideas. Brilliant. So anyway, class. Why can't we be class anymore? What happened to... I'm going to move superficial here for a second. But what happened to women dressing conservative? Okay? What happened to that? That's, that's definitely subjective. That doesn't mean somebody's classy or not, in my opinion. But I think it looks classy. What happened to that? I think it leaves a little bit of mystery. And it shows the woman respects herself enough, at least to me, that she doesn't feel the need to impress the world. Right? She doesn't feel the need to impress. She just respects herself to no enough to know that her intimacy is private. The society is going to say, oh, why are you wearing a one-piece bikini? Uh, that is, like, not cool. But if she respected herself enough, she knows that her intimacy is hers and it belongs to her. At least that's my viewpoint on it. Now, I'm not saying one-pieces are the only way. I, there's some two-pieces that are very classy. So, you get my point, though, is... Why? Why? Why is it that way? Why do we... Why can't we respect our own intimacy anymore? Why can't... I don't run around outside with my shirt off like I'm cool or something. I don't do that. I mean... I don't care. I respect my own privacy. Actually, I don't think anybody knows my private life. Not even my closest friends. And it's not, it's not because I'm holding some se secret mystery although I am. Ugh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. And so, why do I... Because it's mine. And that only deserves to be shared with people who I'm close to, in the sense of intimacy. So, class is not something you do, it's something you are. Okay? If you have $5 in your bank account, don't take somebody on some expensive trip or try and run it on credit because you want to appear classy. You can be classy with zero budget. Hmm, product idea. How to be classy with zero dollars. <laughs> anyway, um, or be classy on a low budget. <laughs> you know, um, class is not about money. It's not about status. It's not about prestige. It's not about upper echelon. It's not about education. It's about choices you make and your level of self-respect. At least to me. And as far as I know, we're losing it as a society. We're lowering our standards every single day. Every single day we're accepting more and more into our lives that are, shouldn't be accepted into our lives. We're bringing the wrong people in because we're afraid of being alone. Our fear of loss or our fear of never having a mark on the world. I believe that we are all designed to leave a mark on the world. In some way, shape, or form. That roots back into my belief system. But I do. I do. I believe everybody has a purpose. My job, and what I believe my calling was, was to unveil that purpose for people. To help them find that purpose. And help them steer them toward that purpose. And sometimes, they have an idea of what that purpose is, and I help captivate that idea. And help them... I seat them into the, the, the pilot seat of their life and let them put them in control. That is my ability. That is what I was given to or given by God. Or, if you're not a Christian, that is what I was, the way I was created or the way I was, oops, made or shit. <laughs> the way that I was formed from the earth. Still sounds kind of religious, doesn't it? The way that I evolved from my chimpanzee former mate. Okay. I'm okay, I'm cracking on evolution, but still, if you believe in evolution, that's okay. I'm not saying it's, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that we need to separate because of our different beliefs. It doesn't mean that we need to agree. It just means we need to bond together and figure out how to overcome our differences to create enough strategy to change the things that we do agree on. That's all it means. Okay? You can have an atheist who just has a kind heart like somebody who's not an atheist. My opinion. Um, because we're made a certain way that's the way it is Athe okay if you're an atheist we are evolved a certain way 
or evolutionary, I mean, not an atheist necessarily. Atheists don't have to believe in evolution. Um, so, or you're of another religion. Whatever your belief is, it doesn't mean that has to be in the way for us to change as a society. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care. I want to make sure that we can move together and we can change things. We have a generation of kids who are lost and they need help. And these kids, these young girls and young men are not having class anymore and they're treating each other like shit. Even though they don't know, they don't know how to treat each other differently. In the age of technology, we have lost the very fundamentals of social skills. Very fundamentals of social skills and interaction and how to live with somebody and how to deal with somebody and how to not be on your phone 24-7. You know why? <laughs> okay. So, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there today. But, let's just say we can all we can all choose. Put the damn phone away. Put the damn phone away for one day. And do something meaningful to support someone else. Have some class. Have some self-respect. And love yourself. The more you love, whether it's yourself or someone else, and truly love. I believe that most of us say we're in love because we are deeply infatuated and we deeply care. But to me, love is not caring. Love is more. Love is... It's God. It encompasses all things. So, you can care about somebody very, very, very much. But, in my word definition of love, which may not be your definition, you cannot love very strongly if you're toward the left side of the spectrum, which is the narcissism side. The more you move away from it, the more capable of love you become. And because of our masses and masses amounts of narcissism, I believe very few people really are in love. I've never, well, when I was a teenager, I've used the words I've loved you, but I've never said it since. Why? Not because the person wasn't capable of being loved. Not because it's sacred to me, and it is, saying those words are sacred, because I commit to what I tell people. My word is gold. But more of the fact that I never felt I was that capable of love at the time. I felt that I needed to work through my narcissism or otherwise I'd feel like I was lying to myself if I told somebody I loved them. Because I can't. <laughs> I couldn't at the point. I just knew I couldn't. I, I knew I could not per put that person above my own needs. And that to me would be a lie if I said that otherwise. And I don't want to deceive people. I want to be honest. I tell people that right off the bat. I want to be honest with you always and to me that's a standard bar I don't break I don't bend it so we need to set our standards they don't have to be like mine just have a standard and don't bend it stick to it of principles very strong principles and don't bend them for anything don't feel like it, being alone is the worst fate in the world it's not there is a world to enjoy and there are people to take care of believe me and they need you you don't have to be in a relationship to be happy I believe you have to love to be happy but you can love dogs you can love animals you can love people you can love family our society just positions love as, as if all the media is saying hey go be in love go be in love with somebody romantically everything positions it when writers for thousands of years have written about it I don't know if it's not a thousand now that I have it. Point is, love. Just simply love people. That's it. That's the answer. That's what class is love for yourself and love for others. Which is my Christian belief love God and love others. Why would you not want to believe in that? Why would you not want to believe in that principle? And I'm not saying you, their religion is your best choice. I'm just saying that principle. Love your God and 
love other people. I think that's really the fundamental principle of all Christianity. I don't think it's loving. Oh yeah, here's where I'm going to get lambasted. I don't think it's loving to feel like you have to force somebody into a way of belief. I think it's when their time, it's their time. And if it's never their time, it's never their time. But to try to force, aka conversion, into someone of another belief system, I think that it's not loving. I think you just want to win. You just want to prove something. I don't care about convincing anybody of anything. I just want people to find happiness in themselves. Anyway, that's my lesson for today.